Previously in my video about the mark of the beast, I told you that there's a high chance that those who don't take the mark will have to flee into the wilderness at some point, even if it's just because we need to travel through the wilderness as the roads aren't open to us. And that's why we need wilderness skills. In this video, I'm going to talk about how the Antichrist and the One World Order can use drones in order to track people in the wilderness or in urban areas. In the hands of an enemy, a drone can be quite a capable weapon, but we need to keep in the back of our minds that the better we know its strengths and its weaknesses, the better we can use them to our advantage. And I'm going to distinguish here between drones that are available to the general public and those that are used by the military. So drones can be used either for combat or for surveillance or for both. And those used by the military like the Predator has exceptionally long ranges and exceptional abilities. To give you an idea, the military uses something called Synthetic Aperture Radar or SAR for short. And it's such a specialized technology with radar signals, they can pick up even footprints from extreme heights and they can detect minefields from way up in the air. So that gives you an idea of the accuracy with which they can follow or track people in the wilderness. And if you haven't seen my videos yet on how to track people in the wilderness, you can check out those videos, I'll link them here. Other advantages of drones is that there is no pilot in the cockpit, so there's no loss of life if the drone is lost. So they're more disposable. There are also technologies like FLIR, which can be a bit of a hazard if you're trying to remain undetected. Because these military drones also have the ability to detect heat signatures, they can be really difficult to avoid. And they are hard to spot if they're high up. But they're also more difficult to target, and they can be deployed in mass. Because a lot of drones have the ability to hover, they are also able to enter small spaces. And that can make it easy for them to track people in forests or in urban areas. This also makes them a valuable rescue asset. Avoiding military drones can be quite tricky, but the civilian ones are easy to evade. And they have some weaknesses, things like that they make quite a noise when they get close to you. And no civilian drone that I know is on the market today has a 360 degree visual field. That means that the drone has got a blind spot which we can exploit. Most drones can be spotted and heard from a distance of around 50 meters. But it can be quite difficult to spot a camouflaged object from a drone's visual field, especially if it's connected to a cell phone screen, which is a relatively small screen. We've even had some trouble finding ourselves in the drone's visual field when we've stood in thick brush. Commercial drones don't deal well with bad weather. High winds and rain can actually keep the drones grounded. Now, all of the above mentioned qualities can be used to our advantage too. While military drones with the use of SAR can actually bounce signals off the ground outside of a building and in through the doors to determine whether there is human presence inside the building or inside a cave, they can't actually determine that from directly above as long as there is a solid roof above you. And as long as there is nothing heating your shelter from inside, there is no way for them to pick up a heat signature. There are types on the market that actually reflect your heat back to you so that there is no heat emanated from your shelter. And then it can be difficult for them to pick up a heat signature, but they'll still be able to detect the difference in the height between your tarp and the ground. Now where drones work to our advantage is that we can use them for security and surveillance, whether we're bugging out in the wilderness or in an urban environment. To give you an example of this, every time I'm out in the mountains, if I've parked my car somewhere, I tend to fly the drone over my car before I return to my car to make sure that there is nobody waiting for me there, especially if I'm really far from home. And I have on occasion found other cars parked on the road where I thought it would actually be deserted. So that way, the drone has actually served as a really good early warning system for me. Drones can also help us to find food, shelter and water without expending a lot of energy. Because they can cover large distances without using a lot of energy, we can go directly to that water source or food source without having to search for it first. 
Drones can even help us to deliver parcels and find evacuation routes in the wilderness. Now, technology has afforded us some really lightweight drones. And so they're easy to carry around in your bag and they don't take up a lot of space. And with a bit of know-how, they can even be equipped with weapon systems or lights. They also have an advantage over mounted security systems. For example, every time there's a strange noise in our area, it's easy for us to deploy the drone to go and have a look even when there's nothing on the security cameras. And because they're so maneuverable, they can get around corners and film at angles that mounted security cameras can't. Of course, you'll always need a power source for drones or some or the other way to charge their batteries, but it's quite easy to come by solar panels that you can use for that purpose these days. So what to do if a drone comes flying past and you're trying to remain concealed? Well, first of all, don't shoot the drone down because you're going to alert other people to your presence. Secondly, try to avoid open spaces. And if you remain really still, you can actually avoid the drone sights. Thirdly, try not to get in front of the drone's camera because then you'll be in the visual field of the operator. There's a really good video by Grundproof where they have um, done a little experiment with thermal vision and a mylar blanket to see whether they would be able to pick up a heat signature from underneath a mylar blanket. If I remember correctly, they also did the experiment with a tarp and the outcome was that as long as your body is not directly touching that tarp or that mylar blanket, it's not actually heating up the cover. So then there's no signature on the thermal vision. Now, those of you who know my channel know that I love to add a little bit of drone footage to every video. And what I've been using is a DJI Mavic Mini 2, this little guy over here. And the reason why I've got a nice big bag for it is because I added some extra batteries. So this is the drone in itself and you can see it folds up really small. You can even just put it in your jacket pocket. Um, and it comes with a remote control that I just connect my phone to. So really simple and easy to carry with you and such a fun toy. Now DJI markets this as one of their smaller, more compact drones, but still with the ability to film in 4K. So that's why it gives me such great footage. And to top it off, I've got some extra batteries just so that I have extended flying time. Now something that not a lot of people know about drones is that most of their parts can actually be printed with a 3D printer. But it is good to keep extra blades and extra parts because every now and then it does crash. Drones can actually be flown without the GPS on. It just means that their return to home function isn't going to work. But if you know the landscape and the landmarks really well, then you'll be able to get your own drone back without the GPS signal. I will add the link for the DJI Mini 2 in the description to this video along with all of the extra parts so you can go and check it out. Remember to hit like and subscribe and until the next time, live ready.